Well, let's open today's program with this Scout pistol. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think of black powder uh, guns as not being powerful as being relatively short-range guns. Well, uh, with these modern uh, guns like this Thompson Sitter gun, uh, that is just simply not the case. They will definitely reach way out there with proper sights and with practice and when you understand what your load is. You know, black powder is very, very consistent in its burn rate. Uh, it gives very, very consistent pressures. So let's open today's program. Down here at 100 yards, we have our steel disc in place out there. So let's do that right now. Now friends, we've had uh, a tremendous amount of interest in black powder. A lot of black powder hunting seasons are starting up, and this is a gun, the Thompson Center Scout pistol that we had on the program recently, and you can tell by comparing the two to the Scout carbine the similarities, and I would bet money. Now, I haven't taken the, uh, this gun apart and tried to interchange different things, but I tell you what, it would probably, uh, so many of the parts look so similar, uh, things like hammers and the breech for that matter, uh, I think it would be uh, close to interchangeable there. Well, looking at uh, the Scout carbine here, if I can set this down without it falling, here we go. Okay, you can see in comparison to the Thompson Center single shot hunting pistol, the contender that we're all familiar with, you can see it's very similar in size to this Scout pistol. Now then friends, something else we'll show you in size. Uh, incidentally, this uh, contender is a Super 14. This is a gun in the uh, 300 whisper chambering and uh, you can tell it's very similar in size as far as the scout pistol and as we've said before the scout pistol is extremely powerful holding up to a hundred grains of black powder and just for size reference a lot of you are familiar with the uh, Ruger Super Black Hawk this is my old Super Black Hawk and uh, it is oh not a whole lot bigger this uh, Super Black Hawk has a seven and a half inch barrel it's not a lot bigger uh, than the standard Ruger revolver there. Well, let's take a look, and this is important. I want to make a point in just a moment. But anytime you shoot a black powder gun, it is so important to take the gun apart and clean it as quickly as possible after you shoot it. And as we've said before, there are a number now of very fine cleaners out there that really do a good job. And I'll, I'll tell you why on this particular gun, this uh, a gun, of course, has a straight line ignition. Remember, these ports here are some sort of equalization type ports. But uh, I was down on the range the other day shooting it, and I had cleaned the gun, I thought, real well. And I had sprayed it down with oil. I would used the proper cleaners. But when I, I loaded it and went to shoot the gun, I had a misfire. And I'll show you why in just a moment. But let's take a look at how uh, these guns come down. They're very, very simple. We've taken the liberty of loosening uh, the uh, parts here for ease of photography anyway you take off the screw here on the uh, fore end here and it just lifts right off now then you have an allen screw right here that very easily comes out and we'll just take it out like I said we've already loosened it take out the allen screw and that holds the barrel to the breech and the barrel of course the whole thing's coming apart now but the barrel will just lift right out and of course here is your breech part and uh, this is this what looks like a flat spring here I think is more for protection of internal parts but you can take it down very easily like this and of course it's uh, very easy to clean and keep oil as it's so important and yes this little spring does just uh, goes in a little groove right here in the hammer itself you can also see it's a very strong and robust ignition system uh, it has an automatic safety on the uh, uh, between the hammer and the trigger here, uh, them working together. The hammer cannot go forward. It has a very strong piece, not the little tip that we're used to, say, on a single-action army coat. Uh, this gun is pretty safe. Uh, in fact, probably very safe to be carried hammered down over a live cap. I'm not sure I would do that on any black powder gun, but in this case, I think you could probably get away with it because even if you hit the hammer, you have enough surface here 
that is going to be very difficult to break. Now then, moving right along, here of course is your barrel and you have the nipple, which is a little different departure from what we're used to. And all you do to clean it real good is just take it out and you have three little holes, a hole in the end and two side holes in the ignition uh, in the nipple there. And of course now you can easily clean uh, the two pressure ports, and I'm going to call them that. I don't know what they're properly called, but I think that's what they do. Pressure ports here in the side, very easily done. You have a small hole here that the ignition spark or flame actually travels through. And here's what I did. I had shot the gun and thought I cleaned it pretty well. I did not take it down, didn't take it apart. And I, had, uh, I didn't clean the ignition system here well enough. So what I had done, I would sprayed a lot of oil in it and it was caked with some black powder residue. Now this appears to be stainless steel, so it's probably not going to rust, but this was clogged. And the a little hole here in, that goes into the barrel itself was also clogged. So what I had, I had a misfire, and it was somewhat difficult. And believe me, you don't want to have a misfire on a single shot gun uh, because it's very, that's another whole procedure uh, in dealing with. If you do happen to get a misfire and you have uh, powder underneath a bullet, the manual gives you the proper procedure to unload this gun. And they're real plain and clear about it, so I would certainly, if you're uh, smart enough to own one of these guns, you're smart enough to read. And I think it's so important that you read the safety manual. But this is a very good system. It is uh, somewhat advanced over what we're used to as far as the old cap lock system like this. These of course are very simple mechanisms, but it offers some ballistic advantage uh, through the use of modern technology.